hearts fixed toward the word of God. Just before we're going to turn the services now over into First Lady's hand. Amen. Let's give God a round of applause for our First Lady. Amen. Glory! Look what God can do. Amen. Good morning, New Jerusalem. Good morning, family. How are you all doing this morning? Uh, well, we want to welcome each and every one of you who have uh, joined us this morning, thanking you for being here with us. Uh, do we have, by any chance, any first-time visitors? If this is your first time uh, ever coming in here and being a part of us, there. Would you mind standing? We're not going to ask you to say anything. <laughs> Trust me, I, <laughs> I've been to churches where they want you to say something. We're not going to ask you to say anything. We just want to see who we have fellowshipping with us. Uh, Sister Betty, we have a welcome package. Would you mind giving that to her? It's on the, right there on the bottom. Yep, just one of those. Uh -huh. We have a welcome package for you. We want to welcome you. We hope that you felt welcome when you walked through those doors. We hope that people greeted you and gave you some love and some hugs and just appreciation for you being here. Inside that welcome package, there is a visitor's card. And we, it, there's a pen also, uh, we, it's your pen. But it, we ask that you fill it out. And then during the offering period, if you will put that in there, then that way we can stay in touch with you. Thank you so much for being here with us. We want to remind everyone that uh, from the hours of 8.30 to 8.55 every Sunday morning, we are providing breakfast. So uh, breakfast, juice, coffee, tea, whatever it is that you would like to, for, for a morning snack. <laughs> Who has social media? Everybody has social media? Pretty much everybody got social media. We're asking that you will please go to the page, like it. I'm not even going to attempt to, you all see the different apps. <laughs> now, the, the biggest one that we want you to go to is the church's website. That one has everything on it. So you can click anywhere, see the messages or whatever. So, uh, and that's right, wait a minute. That's the wrong one. That's the old one. But it is njcferguson.org. Ferguson.org. Now, if you are on Facebook or uh, Instagram, you'll see uh, we'll have this up there as well. Bible study. Can somebody tell me when Bible study is? Although it's right there. It is a Tuesday. Every Tuesday. Now, what time do we start? We provide food, you guys. We provide a dinner. Both, exactly. So if you'll come out, if you need prayer, we've already put out there, if you want prayer, come out between 6 o'clock, 6.30, and we're always open for prayer anytime. Prayer is not just one time thing, it's, it's whenever you need it. All right, for our upcoming events, we do want to remember, or not remember, but we know what today is. What is today? Mother's Day. Mother's Day. All right, we want to say happy Mother's Day to each and every one of you. Um, we're asking, Pastor, did you get the gentleman? Okay, will all the men of New Jerusalem please come over here with, with Pastor? All the men of New Jerusalem. <laughs> Bishop, are you one? <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
We have a small presentation that we want to do for all the mothers of New Jerusalem. If you are a member, you are and a mother, would you please stand? If you're not a member, but you're a mother, we still ask that you stand. My niece is supposed to be, my other niece is supposed to be here, but I don't see her. Okay, that's okay. All right. Uh, give me one second, please. Oh, in the meantime, uh, will you play the video? We have a small video for everyone. Let me turn it down a little bit. Hold on one second. I got the flowers back there. In the meantime. Yep, there you go. We apologize, we're having a little technical difficulty right now. Okay, there it is, is it ready? Yes, play the sound, play the, play the sound. Well, until we're waiting for the sound to go up, um, this is for all of the mothers from Jerusalem, from the men of New Jerusalem. Did it? Everybody didn't get one. Okay. And I could be, and it just wouldn't be right. And if I didn't have you by my side, oh. you were there for Turn me back. to love and care for me when skies were gray. Whenever I was down, you were always there to comfort me. And no one else can be what you have been to me. You will always be, you will always be the girl in my life for If you received your flower and your uh, gift, you can be seated at this time.
We truly honor you mothers. <laughs> I wish I could take credit for it, but. All right, uh, for our next slide, we're our birthday announcements. Um, I ask that if anyone has a birthday, you're a member here, uh, please submit that to me ahead of time so I have enough time to present the slide. Uh, we celebrated a birthday on yesterday, Sister Melody. <laughs> we wanna say happy birthday to you and we love you. We thank God that he brought you here to Jerusalem and we wish you many, 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 many more. Our next birthday is our own brother, Troy Perkins the second. And that is coming tomorrow. So we, we also want to say we thank God that he brought you and your family here to Jerusalem. We appreciate all that you do, and we continue to pray that God's blessings will be on you as well. All right, our upcoming events. Is she here? I don't want to see her here. Okay, that's all right. Uh, this coming Saturday, oh, she is here. <laughs> No, I meant you're over here, so I'm sorry. Our upcoming events, we have our ladies' tea brunch. Do everybody have their tickets? Has everybody purchased their tickets? If, is it possible that if those who want to buy tickets can get some today? Is it too late? If there's anyone who haven't purchased a ticket but would like to, to be in attendance for this Saturday, it's going to be a beautiful time. We have a a great dynamic um, uh, minister who is going to be bringing the word on Saturday. So, um, and of course, food. In case you all didn't know, I, I like food. <laughs> so, um, if you did not purchase the tickets, please, sister, please see Sister Chevette. Will you please stand? For those tickets, you do have some. And if anyone would like to go but need assistance, Pastor, is it okay if we assist them with that? A ticket, if they wanted to come, but, you know, I'll let him. <laughs> All right. Put on your calendar, the first Sunday in June, we will not be in this building. We are fellowshipping with another fellowship church that is um, St. John Missionary Baptist Church. They are located at 913 North Garrison Avenue, St. Louis Avenue, Missouri 63106. That is June 4th at 11 a.m. So you all get to sleep a little bit later. So instead of nine o'clock service for that day, it's gonna be 11 o'clock. Please put on your calendars another big event. We have our pastor's sixth year anniversary. You guys, to honor him, of course, is honoring God because he is our shepherd. He is our leader. He has been, uh, he's been leading us. And it hasn't been easy. I've seen it. I've seen it. And I respect, I respect it before, but I respect more Bishop and Mother for what they have done and instilled into him and into New Jerusalem. So please come out and support, celebrate. It's 3.30 in the afternoon, so that gives you enough time to go home, take a little quick nap, change, whatever. But please support your man of God. We are planning... Um, in fact, the date has been kind of determined. Uh, the first, was it the July, the first Saturday? The first Saturday, and every Saturday until this uh, series is done, we're doing family Christian classes, which is something that all of us can use. The first Saturday, what did I say? Okay, I'm sorry. The first Saturday of every month, 
from July. So July, August, September. And what, yeah. So um, come out. Everybody, you know, it's a learning thing. We all learn from each other. And this is a Q&A, so you can ask questions. No question is dumb. So, and you can answer. If you, if you have an answer that God gave you or, you know, when we ask it, answer. All right. First ever, we're doing a first annual Miss New Jerusalem pageant. <laughs> that date will be August the 5th at 3.30 p.m. right here. Uh, the categories is Little Miss from the ages of 6 to 10, Teen Miss from 11 to 15, and Miss from 16 through 19. For all the young ladies, uh, the last day to enter is June 4th. Please see Sister Happy. Sister Happy, will you please stand? <laughs> please see Sister Happy if you would like your young Miss to attend. They have rehearsals, am I right? The Saturday before, June 4th, right? No, I'm sorry. Uh, what day was it? August the 5th. So please see Sister Happy. All right, so the next one, you, everybody been seeing those sneaker balls? Do anybody know what it is? Okay. All right, from ages 16 through 100, and maybe upper, <laughs> if we find some more. <laughs> But we're having our first sneaker ball. Uh, it's a formal event, but we're your best sneakers. Prizes will be available for the best dress. All right. Tickets are $50, which is very reasonable because I've seen some for $75, $80. So support. Tennis shoes. For those who don't know, it's tennis shoes. <laughs> who got some, some tennis shoe sneakers that they want to sport? Huh? Huh? Uh, I think it, they say, she, she said 15 is fine. All right. <laughs> So we got a praise report. Our praise report, we heard it last Sunday. We were away, and we thank you all who did come and support. And But look at this. The car was flipped over, but baby girl made it. <laughs> baby girl is here today. A true testimony. She, she's in pain, but she's here. God spared your life, sweetheart. I, I, I just saw today that another couple accidents happened last night. They didn't survive. The car looked like that. They didn't survive. There's a purpose on your life. You ask God, why did you spare my life? It wasn't just to come to Jerusalem, but it was to do something. God has something special for you. It ain't over. Your brother's a testimony. Both of you are a testimony. God is using you all. Let him use you. Go to your pastor, ask him, what can I do? Be a part. Be, be conditioned for Jerusalem. God is going to blow your mind even the more when you're faithful to him. So we thank God for sparing her life and anyone else who's been in a serious car accident and is here today. I don't have it on the slide, but we have Sister Odessa, who is fellowshipping with us today. We thank you for your prayers, because look at her. When the doctors try to give up on her, when the doctor said there ain't no hope, God said, you ain't the doctor, I am. 
Dr. Jesus said, it's all good. And I'm keeping you here for a purpose. I don't care what the situation looks like. There's a purpose for you as well. There's a purpose for all of us. All of us, not just the ones who've been through, the ones who are going through, and the ones who have overcame. There's a purpose. There's a testimony on each of your lives. Be that witness for Christ. Today, following the Doors of the Church uh, segment, we are having baptisms today. I believe two of them. <laughs> this time I can guarantee you the water is better. It's warm. At the time when it's time for baptism, the usher is going to come and get you so that you can go and change into your um, attire that you're going to baptize in, and then we'll bring you up. Uh, another thing, when we open the doors of the church, we kind of explain that that's for if you want to become a part of this ministry. If you have not accepted Christ, there is a moment where you can. If you would like to, if you have accepted Christ, but you would like to be baptized, you can come up. Now, I did talk with pastors. There, are, I was that, I'm still a little nervous, but I was that person who did not want to be in front of anyone. So um, if you are not comfortable, we do not want to hinder you from coming to accept Christ, to be a part of the ministry. We have these chairs right here that you can come and take as well. But we do not want to stop anyone from coming. We want you all to be comfortable and welcome to, to come in and to be a part of the ministry, be a part of the family of God. At this time, we are going to go into our tithes and offering. Uh, <laughs> moment. We're going to, uh, there's three ways of giving. As you can see, we'll leave that up. And then we'll, um, at the time, the usher is coming around. You have the cash app, and that's dollar sign New Jerusalem 1977, Dazelle 314 368 or you can mail that in. All righty. At this time, can we ask Bishop if you will come and pray for us? Oh, we got another one. All right, you all. We bless you. We thank you for, for listening to those of our announcements. We're going to turn it over to our bishop as he's going to pray over the offering. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we come now in the name of Jesus, thanking you for this offering, thanking you for your word. For your word said, it is you who gives us the power to get well, that your covenant may be established. And you are doing it in tithes and offering. Thank you right now for those who have obeyed your word. Father, we ask that you open up the understanding of those who have disobeyed your word, that they may be a product, dear God of your word going forth. This we ask in Jesus' name. And they all said amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. We're going to bless the Lord for our pastor as he come up. Let's give God a hand praise for what he have given unto us. Amen. Glory to God. Testing one. All right. All right. Good morning, everybody. Amen. We bless God for another beautiful day. Uh, a day that was not promised to us. Death is happening every single day. So I'm just grateful for those of us who either have a mother with us or 
if God will have a mother that has already made her transition into glory. You need to honor your mother and your father and honor their memories. Amen. Now, I'm, I'm not going to tell you what you should and should not do uh, because everybody is different. Um, some people still visit grave sites, and there are some folks who talk against it. Um, what you need to know is that mom is not there. Uh, whatever your, your, your loved one or whatever who have made their transition, they're not in the ground. Their soul is alive somewhere. We hope and pray that their soul is alive in heaven and that they are in rest. But I need you all to know the, the reality that uh, there is a heaven and there is a hell. You cannot be spiritual. There are so many people right now who are just talking about being spiritual. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm spiritual. Well, okay, if you say so. Uh, but it's, it's more to life than just being spiritual. Because if there's spirits, then you have to understand that there are uh, sides to those spirits. There's good spirits and there are bad spirits. There is the head of those good spirits, which is God. There is the head of those evil spirits, which is Satan. And if, if there are heads of those spirits, then you have angels and you also have demons. Many of us want to act like they don't exist. But sooner or later, you will find out. I, I pray that you find out before you have to find out. Amen. Uh, be, be, before we, we get going, um, I am looking, we are looking to get the choir back together. We have been talking about it. Uh, I would like to have the choir ready to sing by the first Sunday in June, at least uh, the Sunday afternoon service. That means immediately following service. Please hear me and understand me, because I, I, I know us people don't really understand the words immediately. You know, we think immediately means 5, 10, 20 minutes afterwards. As soon as we dismiss, I would love to have everybody who would like to be a part of the choir to meet over in the children's church. Everybody else can continue, uh, you know, fellowshipping and all of that, but so that we don't take a whole lot of time because it's Mother's Day, folks got dinners in the oven, somebody is, is, is checking on their greens on the stove right now, or we're trying to get to the restaurants before the line get real long. So all I need is roughly five minutes. What I'm asking everybody is what day works best? Because we used to have a time when the majority of the people that we had in the choir wasn't working, and you know it was easy to come up with a day. Now everybody's working, and we're trying to, to put a schedule together that we can kind of get the majority of the people there. So um, we really just need to know what day is going to work best. So I want you thinking about that. Uh, so as soon as we go over into the fellowship hall, we can come up with a time and a date, and we can start rehearsing uh, this week so that we can get songs together. How many of you all love music? Do you know that music is a big part of the worship experience? Most people come to church because they want to hear the choir and they want to hear the preacher, or they want to hear the choir or the preacher. Most people just come for the choir, tell the truth. So I would love for them to have a choir that they could hear that will blow their socks off, that will usher in the spirit of God so that when I get up, I don't have to work so hard. Amen. Amen. Because it's hard working on a very cold crowd. Amen. Amen. I'm glad y'all ain't like that today, though. I appreciate it. Um, first Sunday in June, we are going to be worshiping with St. John Missionary Baptist Church. Pastor Fred Lemons, they have asked us to come and, and uh, co-worship with them. And they're asking me to bring the message. Uh, we need some new mics real, real bad. These, these mics are so intermittent. So um, we actually have them on order and they were supposed to already have been here, but there are shipping delays and whatever else. But these mics are going in and out and they're, they're kind of annoying when it comes to the sound. So you all just continue to pray for us. Um, but on that service, brothers and sisters, I need you all to be there with us. I know that's gonna be a long day for us because we're gonna have that combined service and then 
maybe, you know, depending on how long y'all like to shout and all that stuff, uh, we have to get back here at 3.30 for the, the opening of the anniversary. But they asked us to do it. Usually we don't take uh, invitations in the month of June because of the anniversary. But Pastor Lemons is special to us. He's special to me. So uh, it's not often that everybody want to hear from you. So when somebody asks you to do something, if it's possible, try your best to say yes. But understand that your yes is expected. Uh, so it's costing us, but we will, we will do our best to get there and, and be a part of the service and then make our way back over here for the opening of the anniversary. All right. Um, two more things. First thing is I'm so grateful. I'm happy to see Sister Odessa with us today. She has been going through quite a bit. Uh, Satan continues to, to try and take her saw fit to leave her with us. Amen. And uh, we know that what you have experienced is um, it's hurting, it's, it's daunting, and it's, it's depressing, or it can be. Brothers and sisters, Satan can't take your joy. You have to give it. Satan can't take your joy. You have to give it. Don't give it away. I know he wants to make us depressed. He wants to put us in a place of anxiety. But Satan can only do what you allow him to do. So don't let him steal your joy. Count it all joy, brothers and sisters, when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work in you. Amen. So, sister, I just want to tell you congratulations for continuing to push. So glad to have you back with us on today. All right, last but not least, uh, uh, a, a, a little bit of encouraging. I would like to encourage you to get to church on time. We, are, we, we come now extra early, and we try to set the church up, and we set up breakfast and, and, and coffee and all of that, and we're making all of these things, and sometimes, like, uh, you know, most Sundays, uh, y'all come at 8.59 and you want to eat breakfast, or you come at 9.10 and you mad because the breakfast is put away. Breakfast is served between 8.30 and 8.55 so that we can try and start on time. God is an on-time God. Jesus is an on-time God. Yes, he is. If God is an on-time God, you should be too. That's all I'm saying. I set y'all up for that one. Yeah. Amen. So help us because um, we, we want to be... Um, we want to be good stewards over what God has given us. And when we purchase this food and we come in and we take time to cook it and all of that, and then nobody shows up and we have to close it down, that goes to waste. And, and everybody want to know, you know, Pastor, where's my money going to? Well, when we got to throw food away, it goes to the trash. And we don't want to do that. Your money ain't going to the preacher. No, no. It needs to. Amen. I'm, I'm working 40 hours a week for this ministry. And, and Pastor right now is, is, is not getting a salary or, or barely a love offering. Everybody who preach on Sundays come and they, they raise an offering for them. I preach every Sunday. Why y'all tripping? I would love for you all to go to your jobs. And, and, and clock in and clock out, and then at the end of the week, they be like, God bless you. <laughs> Y'all won't be working there very long. I've been here for six years. Six years working 40 hours a week. So, uh, muzzle not the ox that treads out the corn. Big ox up here. All right. Uh, uh, two things first. I 
make sure. First Lady, would you, would you come here, please? Uh, Y'all, I, 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 I can't, I'm not taking credit for this, so y'all, why y'all all in and uh, I'm gonna give First Lady her present when y'all ain't around. Oh, baby, I'm sorry, I didn't see you. You stealthy? Just, you just came up, I ain't even see you. This is from uh, Deacon and Mother Johnson, and they asked me to please present this to you. So, on behalf of Deacon and Mother, thank you for being the woman that you are. Jerusalem, give our first lady a round of applause. You all, amen. You, you need to recognize, put some respect on it. You all don't understand, uh, in the middle of the night, two o'clock in the morning, she's up and she's putting these slides together and, and she's saying, hey, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna go and, and she's purchasing the flowers and all of the trinkets and taking the time to put all that stuff together. She does that every single week, every week for you. She's here whether she feels well or not and she's vacuuming and cleaning and, and re-taping because y'all decide to tear up the tape on the, on the pews and uh, she's buying all of the, the, the stuff and put, she, she's the heart, Jerusalem. So uh, I'm just grateful for all of the work that she is doing uh, that makes me look good, amen? Because I'm, I love you all, but I'm, I'm working on messages and cutting grass and all of that, and while I'm doing that, she's putting all of this other stuff together. So uh, we want to honor her for all that she is doing. Mother, would you come here, please? Mother Adams, would you come here, please? So, oh, you ain't gonna come up? I gotta come down? I, I, come, I come on down. Well, this is also from uh, Deacon and, and Mother Johnson because they always, every, every, whether it's Mother's Day, whether it's anniversaries, no matter what, they always come and, and they show us love. And there are people who have been and who is showing us love and, uh, I posted this week, we, we just got a card in the mail saying, I love you and, and you're special. And uh, I looked and it was from Sister Sharon M. Adams and it meant so much. So I wanted you all to know that you can send me stuff in the mail because I love it just like you love gifts and all of that. But this is Mother's Day and First Lady is the mother of my children, but she's not my mom. I'm grateful that I do still have a mom who's with us. And I know that that's not going to be the, the, the case always. If the natural order continues, one of these days, mom is not gonna be here. But I honor her. I, my wife, wifey, she, she, she helped me pick these out. Well, she didn't help me pick them out. She picked these out uh, for you. And, and she said, this is what, because I love you. Thank you, son, thank you. Amen. All right, so uh, we are going to, to miss our children now to go into the children's church. So all of our children, 13 and under, if you are 13 and under and you would like to go over to the children's church, uh, I want you all to go uh, with our special volunteer, Sister Kim, who has, who, who, who has been here for us. You all, Sister Kim is, is not, a, a naturalized member, but, but she is an honorary member. She has been working in this vineyard for over a year. Amen, so we are thankful. Amen, give her a hand, clap of praise. She's dealing with y'all kids, and all y'all kids ain't easy to deal with. 
Amen. Testing one, two, would you? Praise the Lord, everybody. I just wanted to make a very, very quick announcement. Um, for all the mothers who have little children or children that don't have jobs and can't go to the store and buy them anything, and they and you don't have a husband or you know older children to help them or whatever, you can see me after service and I'll give you something for Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to those. Amen. Amen. No mother left behind. All right. All right. Um, so let's 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 move because we still have quite a bit. Uh, we have a couple of baptisms right after this, and I'm thanking God for baptisms. Amen. That is so important. <laughs> baptisms is is uh, the birthing process for Christians. Amen. So you all go and you have baby showers and all of that. Uh, saying that a, a, a new member of the family is coming. When we baptize, that is family members coming to the body of Christ. Amen. When you join the church, that's just you coming to, you know, this particular assembly. But baptism is uh, entry into the body of Christ. You become a family member of God. Amen. So that is very important to us. So we want to continue on with these baptisms. Uh, if we have you scheduled for baptism, please, um, we don't want to force any child who, who don't really understand what baptism is. Amen. Amen? We're trying to help them and we want to educate them. But if we have you scheduled for baptism, if your child decides that, hey, mom, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous, I'm scared, uh, I, I don't want to do this right now, talk to them like on Friday, you know, Friday, Saturday, uh, early Saturday morning, because we come and we put fresh water in here uh, each time we're going to do baptism, and I don't know how big this pool is. I, I don't know how many gallons, you know, uh, 100 gallons or whatever, but uh, it costs. And then to heat it, we have to be here to put that heater element in there. This morning, that water was like boiling. Um, but they was complaining it was cold last time. They're going to get in there this time and feel something different. <laughs> Y'all don't want to go to hell. Stay out of hot stuff. Uh, <laughs> but uh, what I, I don't want anyone to ever feel bad about backing out of baptism. Because uh, Bishop and Mother will probably tell you I did it to them like three times before I actually got baptized. We didn't have a pool at our church, so uh, they was taking me to other people's churches who was going to baptize me, and I got up there, and I looked in there, and I was like, no, nah, I changed my mind. My mom was like, what? We done came all the way over to this other church. They done put water. I no, I'm not getting in there. I, you know, so it, when it finally happened, it happened at Devotional Bar. We went to El Bethel. We went to some other churches, and, and so I, I ain't mad. I just... I, I, once again, money is, is, is kind of hard to come by nowadays. How, how many people understand that? Everybody in here that got a bill know exactly what I'm talking about. So when y'all leave y'all house, y'all turn off all y'all lights and everything, talking about, hey, money don't grow on trees. Right? Everybody telling their kids, turn that light off. Some of y'all unplug the, the, the clocks at night. Sleep people don't look at clocks. You don't need that. So we're, we're just trying to make sure that, that we're not wasting, and understand what I'm saying when I say wasting, wasting the time and the effort and all of that stuff to put uh, water in and nobody shows up or there's been a change of plans. All right. Oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Y'all, I'm going to make this really, 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 somebody said it ain't quick enough. Uh, Let's go to Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs chapter 31. Everybody reads about the, uh, the virtuous woman, and that's earlier on in 31, but I want to read the last few verses. I want to read the last few verses, and, and um, we're going to read verse 25 through 31. How many of you all know when we come to church, the whole purpose of church is to give God praise, and we give God praise through his son, Jesus Christ? 
You understand what I'm saying? Church service, uh, uh, the word of God, everything in the word points to Christ. Amen. So it's, it, it was a little difficult for me to, to have a, a Mother's Day sermon. Uh, and, 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 well, just read with me. Uh, Proverbs 31, verse 25 through 31, reading from the Amplified Version. Um, it, it, I love the Amplified. It, it really opens up the meaning and the message. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and her position is strong and secure, and she smiles at the future knowing that she and her family are prepared. She opens her mouth in skillful and godly wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue, given counsel and instructions. She looks well to how things go in her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, happy, prosperous, to be admired. Her husband also, and he praises her, saying, Many daughters have done nobly and well with the strength of character that is steadfast in goodness, but you excel them all. Charm and grace are deceptive and superficial beauty is vain. But a woman who fears the Lord, reverently worshiping, obeying, serving, and trusting him with all filled respect, she shall be praised. Give her of the product of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates of the city. May God bless the reading, hearing, and especially the doers of his word. You can be seated. Let's talk. Let's talk for just a, a, a couple of minutes from the idea, like a mother. Like a mother. I, I, uh, a, a, a few months ago, uh, we were sending text messages, and we have several group chats and, and group text messages. Uh, and, and one of our family text messages, we were putting together a family vacation with multiple households. And uh, my sister responded to one of, the, uh, one of the, the text messages that somebody cooks like a mother. And, you know, my mom, who wasn't watching that commercial, was like, you need to watch your mouth, you know, because everybody hadn't seen that or you know he cooks like a mother or she cooks like a mother and and they were talking about I guess that that uh, the ragu sauce or whatever prego or it was one of the sauces but mom didn't understand where she was going with that and everybody was like "Ooh, you finna get it but I, I was trying to figure out Lord how, how can I let them know what it is to be a mother because just because you have a baby don't make you a mother Brothers, just because you have children don't make you a father. There are a lot of people who I have talked to who talks about their donors, you know, and uh, the only thing that he did for me was he donated to my mom, and that's how I'm, I'm here. But uh, what I thought I would do today is, is give you just a few examples of some of the mothers in the Bible, uh, and there are several. There are several. Uh, throughout the scriptures that, that, that can be praised, that can be emulated. But uh, there was just a few that I picked out, and I, I did some research and, and, and pulled up some of these different um, uh, websites and, and things. Other folks have done the work, so I'm not trying to take credit for their work. I just put a collage together of different works that have been out there so that we could somewhat kind of collaborate, if you will. Uh, will. Will you all follow me? Because it's, it's quite a bit. Let, let, me, let me take an opportunity to say thank you to all of the women who have sacrificed to become a mother, because it is a sacrifice. Uh, uh, some of you all started off with uh, Coca-Cola bottles, and after baby number one, you went to a two-liter and by baby five, six, seven, it, it was a keg. And, and, and you might not realize 
how many different hormonal changes you go through. And, and, and sometimes uh, men can be really mean and, and, and not understanding and, you know, want to talk about how because your body had to stretch to accommodate another human being that uh, after the stretching there was marks left because of the stretching. And then they want to go and look for the next best thing because they warped your body all out of shape. I know you do. What I want, the, the ones who I want to know is, is the brothers. Yeah, I know Father's Day is coming, and it, it, you'll get your turn. You'll get your turn, trust me. But mothers are, are to be appreciated because uh, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Well, the chicken came first because God didn't make eggs. He made animals. And inside the animals came the rebirthing process. The woman came before the child. There, there, there could not be us. There could not be a me if there was not a her. But I, I understand that there was a her in him. But uh, there's the old saying, mama's baby, daddy's maybe. Some of y'all may have heard that before. But uh, mothers have done some wonderful things. But... In, in more recent years, you all, I've seen some mothers do some strange things. I have seen mothers who have been in the news for killing their children, for, for putting them and locking them into cars and seats and submerging the car into the river. And I've, I've seen mothers who have, uh, some have been going through postpartum depression who have strangled their kids and, and have buried them in bathtubs and, and all of these different kind of things who have taken knives and have killed their children and I want you to know that God have spared your life. God have spared your children and God gave you even though you might be going through some of that. Oh you all I remember when 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 First Lady uh, Amaria and, and Akil, if you will, were, were planned. The other ones, not so, no, 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 baby, not an accident. Not an accident. <laughs> Y'all, don't worry. We, we talk about this all the time. This is, but, I, man, when, when, when First Lady found out, and she wasn't First Lady then, I wasn't preaching nothing. Uh, <laughs> But when she found out that she was pregnant with Alondra, uh, she was still breastfeeding Amaria. And uh, she was taking contraceptives to make sure that Alondra right then didn't come. So when she found out she was pregnant, she called me. I was on the base and she was crying. And you all thought she was crying because she had found another text message or she had went through the phone bill again and, and, and whatever, but she was crying because she said, I took a pregnancy test and I'm pregnant. And I said, well, baby, congratulations. She said, no, it's not time, it's too soon. I'm, I, I haven't got rid of this one yet. She's still attached and she eats a lot and I won't, y'all, she was upset. But she endured and, and, and Unlike a lot of other people, we were stationed in different places where she didn't have her mom to come and help her. She didn't have my mom to come and help her or her sisters or my sisters. She was, she was isolated. Some of you all are, are complaining and, and you got mothers and sisters and aunties who are right around you who come by every other day to, to help and to love on you and all of that. But here we have mothers right now who don't really understand what it means to be a mom. Don't understand the struggles, don't understand the, uh, uh, the sacrifice. Man, if I wanted to use a word over and over when it comes to being a mom, it's sacrificing. There are times when you want to eat, but you got to make sure that they eat. There are times when you want new clothes, but you got to make sure they got new clothes. There are times when you want to get your hair and your nails done. The one thing my wife says that disgusts her most often is going to the stores and seeing 
mothers with their hair and their nails and they, you know, their hands and their feet and new, and then they, they little snotty nosed kids is walking behind them with raggedy clothes and, and, and you would take care of yourself and completely disregard your children. Oh, I'm already preaching. It's a sacrifice. The love that, that God has for us is shown through the mother in how she sacrifices and all the things that she's done. See, I, I wanted to talk to you today about the paternal mother and, and tell you how God is a mom to all of us. It, there would be no birth, and God says, I'm the one who gives life. So you all need to understand why, why brothers and sisters, y'all taking credit for them kids, that God just loaned you little people. God says, I'm allowing you to be the manager of little people. You have to understand that you're going to give an account to God for how you did his children. But let's, let's talk. I, I only have a few. I only have a few. I, I, I deleted some of them so that we could move through. But let's talk about Sarah for a mother. Uh, Sarah, the mother who waited. And in parentheses, I put patience. Sarah, we all know Sarah was childless. In Genesis 11, we, we, we read the story about Sarah being childless. And God came and, and told Abraham when Abraham said, God, what will you give me for my work? Uh, will you not at least give me an heir? And God told Abraham to look up in the stars. And he says, as you cannot number the stars, you also won't be able to number the children that I will give you. Now, you have to understand how old they were at the time. So, you know, they felt, okay, well, if uh, we're already past child age, but we need to go to work right now. We, we need to get busy right now so that we can have the kids that God is going to give us all of the kids. And it was 15 years before God answered that prayer. She was patient. How many of us don't have patience, mothers? Because that's, that's who I'm talking to today. That's who I'm talking to. Now, daddies, if y'all here, oh, well, okay, let's. Mothers, you shouldn't be mothers unless you have husbands so that you don't have to argue about where's the daddy. I ain't, listen, no, 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 no. Don't misunderstand me. Some, somebody getting mad. I'm, I'm not pointing fingers. I'm, I'm not, what I'm trying to give you is, is God's order. God has an order. Husband, wife, children. Now, there's a whole lot of sinners in, in this room. If I was to tell you the truth, I'm probably the chief sinner in the room, but I'm recovering. I'm recovering. I'm glad my sister used to always make fun of me because she, she told me, brother, uh, I got kids and your baby brother got kids and brother, you ain't got no kids. Brother, there must be something wrong with you. Y'all, they, they laughed at me for a long time, you know. Uh, you, you must not be working. You know, I'm, I'm trying to put it mildly. But if everything was working, I could have filled up this church. But it was God only. Grace and mercy that covered me because Lady Adams couldn't deal with a whole lot of other baby mamas. See, if we do it God's way, it, it will be less problems. Not saying there won't be no problems because uh, uh, we were married and we were having kids, but it was still problems. There was still, you know, uh, uh, a difference in, in how we were raising those kids. She said, you always talking about beating everybody else, child, but beat your own kids. 
Well, no, my kids are pretty good. She said, no, that, now, when you leave, I got to tear them tails up. And you stop beating on my babies. There is a problem in, in how we are raising our kids. This is why we're getting ready to start the family class, because you have a way of raising the, the, the child, and, and daddy has a way of raising the child, and they don't meet, and it causes conflicts now with you and him, and God forbid that if the child is in a separate home and the baby come home and the baby got a little whip on the leg and, and now you wanna fight because the baby did something wrong and, and got a whooping and you felt, don't be putting your hands on my kid. Well, do you know that the Bible says that, that you supposed to be putting your hands on them kids? Do you know what the Bible says? Because I done had church people, now it's, you, you know, and it used to just be I'm trying not to go there, but it used to just be other church people who didn't look like us that would talk about putting their kids in time out. You know, when you heard a, a child hollering and screaming and throwing a tantrum, it didn't used to be us as children. Right? You would go in the store and you just knew. I'm talking, I'm only talking to 30 plus people. These younger folks don't know, don't know what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm talking to 30 plus who, who remember when we couldn't throw tantrums. We was the only people who got beat and was told to shut up at the same time. We was the one who your mama would whoop you and say, shut it up, Sh shut up before I give you something to cry for. And I'm thinking, you is right now, you is right now. I got something to cry for right now. But the Bible says, if you spare the rod, you spoil the child. And I had somebody try to tell me, well, they're talking about the rod of correction. You know, the rod, they, they use it to, to pull in the sheep. I said, okay, let's go to this other scripture that the, it says, beat them with the rod. <laughs> tell, me, tell me what that scripture means to you. He wasn't talking spiritually. He wasn't talking emotionally. Uh, Tie that tail up. Beat them, not spank. See, some, ain't got time, ain't got time. Patience, patience. It, some of us have to be patient. We're, we're asking our children to be something overnight that you ain't became overnight. You want them, I, I remember, I remember working with my son uh, and, and, and he was in, 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 in like first grade and he learning how to read. I, Mama said, okay, baby, the word is cat, C-A-T, cat. You see that word? Yes, ma'am. Y'all, his voice been like that ever since he was two. I'm telling, my son's voice haven't changed since he was two. He, no, it hasn't. Son, can you say the word? Yes. Say it, cat. Spell it, C-A-T. All right, son, here's the word. What is the word? Uh, frog. <laughs> frog? No, boy, cat, C-A-T. I said, baby, listen, you, you're not patient. Get out the room, because you've been with him all day. Let me help you out. Okay, come here, that, come here, that's my boy. Come on, boy. Son, yeah, dad, we're going to go through this. Don't, don't worry, your mom, she's not patient. The word is cat. C-A-T, cat. Can you say it, son? Yes, sir. Cat. C-A-T, cat. All right. Here's the word. What's the word? Uh, frog. <laughs> you dumb! How can you? She said, oh, oh, I thought we was patient. <laughs> now, listen. The words you just heard me say was literally the words that I said to my son, which was hurtful. Many of us is calling our kids dumb and stupid and ugly, and then when they act out your words, you get mad. When you tell them things like, you, you're gonna be just like your daddy, you're gonna be just like your no good mammy, because our grand, uh, grandparents, because our grandmama now is 40, you know, our grandparents is telling our, our, our babies this because we still haven't learned. 
Words do. I don't want to hear sticks and stones can break my bones, but words don't hurt. Words hurt. Words hurt. Let your mama tell you that you're ugly and, and tell me how, how it feels. Let your daddy tell you that you're worthless and, and, and you tell me how it feels. Let somebody who, who you love, period, tell you anything that's hurtful and tell me how it feels. We need to stop lying to our children, but we also need to become patient. That, that's, that's what Sarah, Sarah exhibited patience. Hagar, let's, let's talk about Hagar. You, 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 no, I don't want to talk about Hagar. I don't want to talk about Hagar. Never mind. Never, never mind. Uh, time is of the essence. We're going to go past Hagar. I want to talk about Joshabed. Anybody know who Joshabed is? You may not. Some, somebody's like, oh, okay, man, that's, that's a dude name, first of all. Who is Joshabed? Joshabed actually was the mother of Moses. She had a plan because Pharaoh decided... I heard about this savior who was coming into the world who was going to save his people. And he made a decree that we were going to kill every boy. We were going to kill every child. And, and, and the midwives said, we're not going to do that. We, I just can't bring myself to do it. He said, okay, well, every boy child over the age of two and every boy child from then on that's born, we're going to throw him in the river, in the Nile, and we're going to kill him. One mother decided I can't do that. Her name was Joshebed, and, and she waited for three months. She hid this baby while she could, but after three months, she could no longer hide him, so she put him in a, in a little crate, in a basket, and sent him down the river, and, and the, little, the little sister, the little girl, actually, because I guess that would be his big sister, walked down the river and watched as, as the, the basket went, but she had a plan. She had a plan for her child. How many of you all have a plan for your children? Some of you all ain't even got a plan for your, uh, uh, for your finances. I am sick and tired, and I say this all the time, and you all don't hear me. I'm sick and tired of, of, of your GoFundMe pages because somebody died, and you want the rest of the world to help bury them. That's why it's called insurance. Don't tell me you can't afford it because you buying $200 pairs of shoes for your kids with C's and D's in school. That's why when, 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 when Lady, Ag Lady Adams asked about you know, if, if they don't have a ticket, and you all, please don't, don't get me wrong, don't misunderstand. I know that we all can fall on some hard times. Every last one of us can fall on hard times. All of us, every now and then, need some help. But I guarantee you, the majority of us in here can come up with $100 in a day, even if it meant you had to call somebody to borrow it. When you want to do something, you can come up with it. If I told you right now, bring me $100 by the end of service and I'll flip it and give you a grand at the end of service, y'all be on the phone. Hey, Pastor, you take cash out? You got Zelle? You, you call your homie? Hey, man, uh, uh, bring me that weed money. I, I, I'm going to flip it real quick. We ain't even got to sell nothing on this one. The preacher going to flip this one for us. Why y'all looking like y'all don't know nobody who sell drugs? Everybody in here knows somebody who sell drugs. Some of y'all in here. Oh, that bad preacher. He's a bad preacher. All right, let's get back. A plan. You need to have a plan for your children. Do you, I'm, I'm, the, the people who say, I'm, 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 uh, uh, many parents have said things like, I'm doing the best I can. This child did not come with an instruction manual. How many people have heard that kids don't come with instruction manual? Have you heard that? Yeah, well. That's very untrue. 
Kids do come with an instruction manual. It's called the Bible. God tells every last one of us when we should have them. Who was it? Uh, uh, was it? Was it Robert De Niro? 70-something years old, just had a baby. Is it, is it? Yeah. Y'all, that's, that's ludicrous unless God told him he gonna live to 110. Because you bringing in a child that your, the regular life expectancy for a man is, is like 77 or 78. So you're going to leave a child at the age of seven or eight without a father that's irresponsible. And, 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 and we, we send in messages. The church folks send in messages. Congratulations. We send in messages to Nick Cannon. Congratulations. Well, he can afford it. ain't about what you can afford. Church people. That's why I don't like church people. I'm telling you the truth. I don't like church people. Church people are wicked. The Bible even says so. Y'all, 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 y'all read it all the time. Second Chronicles says that if my people, this is God talking. God is saying, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked. Church folks, wicked. You got to be careful dealing with church people. Church people will, 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 will take the word of God and, and, and beat up on folks who come off the street. Something wrong when ain't nobody beating you up. Because y'all remember we weren't always church people. Your pastor was dealing drugs and, and, and gang banging and, and, and all of that and whole monging and, and, and all of that. And, and, and we was praying. Pray for the pastor's kids. Now, your, your child got saved, but a, the next hooligan walk in the church and you want to put him or her out. Y'all, we, we, we got to do better. As a church family, with love and kindness have I drawn. I, I, we we got to keep moving. I, I'm just trying to, I'm just telling you the truth. Y'all don't, y'all hate the truth. Ain't it, a, it's, it's a sad day when the children of God hate the truth. The truth will make you free. Make you free. See, y'all know the difference between being set free and being made free? Any, anybody know the difference? I'm, I'm glad he brought that up because there, there's something about being set free. Sweetheart, do me a favor. Go open up the door to the, to the building. Y'all, I'm finna open up this door um, I, I thought so I can set you free. So if you don't want to be here, if you think I'm, I'm taking too much of your time, you you welcome. Y'all can be set free. Bye, daddy. <laughs> Y'all have been set free. Now, let me, let me make you free. You. Out. Now. No. I don't care about you kicking and screaming. Get out. Out. No. You can't help her. Bye. Get out. Uh. Close the door. Don't let her back in. You all. I made her free. She couldn't stay. The truth will make you free. You cannot remain ignorant and in bondage when you know the truth. But that's why Satan wants to keep you ignorant so that you can remain. Somebody thinks, be I know folks, uh, I go and I do prison ministry on Thursdays and they're telling me, well see, Pastor, see uh, the man is keeping us down. There's only one black dude in the, in the circle. I'm like, who's the man for you? I know who we said the man was, but who's the man for you? 
Well, see, as an ex-con, I can't do it. I was on the phone two weeks ago with a, an individual who was a, an ex-resident of a prison twice. And he made legally $60,000 in the month of December. He owns big rigs, semis. He had two or three trucks on the road. He made 60 grand in the month. Don't tell me that your circumstances, when God has something for you, man can't keep it from you. It don't matter what, what, what your degree is. It don't matter if you don't have a degree. It don't matter if you never went to school. Do you know how many of your people invented things that didn't have no education? Don't tell me what God can't do. There is nothing that's holding you back but you. Now, that's the truth. You are free. You need a plan. You need a plan for your children. That's, that's, that's why we're starting this family class, so that you know that your kids do come with a plan. The Bible says train them up in the way that they should go. God wouldn't tell you to train them if he wasn't going to help you, if there was no instructions. Okay. Naomi. Naomi was the mother-in-law who shared her faith. So we ain't just talking about mothers. We talking about the in-laws too. Everybody got that mother-in-law suite, right? Some of them has a rocking chair in it, you know. Some of them have an electric chair in it. Y'all got them in-laws that you either love or you hate. It's, it's, it's very few in-laws that's in the middle. You, you, you know what I'm saying? Tell the truth. I don't, some, some of y'all ain't going to tell the truth because your in-laws is in here. You only, it, it wasn't always pretty with my in-laws. It wasn't all, if, if Lady Adams was to tell you the truth, it wasn't always pretty with her in-laws. And, and, and how hard it is, man, it, when you have to grow with another family. When I stood in, at the altar and, you know, the, the preacher said, and your people shall be my people, I, I was silent. He said, and your people shall be my people. And her people were sitting right over there. And I'm like... My dad looked at me, he said, the people shall be my people. Well, if I'm a lie, you make me lie, sure. Your people shall be my people. Mm. I caused a wedge. I caused a wedge between my family that have hurt us up until this day. There's been some, uh, some healing as we learned better but how many of you all know once you do something, once you say something, you can't take it back? When you put that word out there, you can apologize all you want to. It's like a bullet. It misfired. It was an accident. It's gone. You can't call it back. None of us are Superman or the Flash that can go and grab it and bring it back. It's out there. How many of us... Brothers and sisters, that's why the Bible says don't be unequally yoked. Be careful who you're marrying. You a Christian, they're from the church of Satan. And y'all want to have a reception. You want to drink wine, they want to drink blood. Mother-in-laws, how, how many of you all are, are, are truly loving like it's yours? Or, 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 or will you side with your son or side with your daughter even though you know they're wrong? But because they're yours, yours can do no wrong. 
I ain't going to even talk about, you know, some of the wrong things that I did. And, and uh, my wife already said, if my kids do something, I'm turning them in myself. <laughs> Baby, you can't do that. We got to protect them. We got to, you know, put them in the Underground Railroad, ship them overseas or something. We're looking up countries that don't have the ability to, to you know, right, we're, no, no extradition rules. See, my mom, my mama holy. My mama holy loved the Lord. Loved the Lord, he heard her cry, pitied her ever grown. Long as she lived with trouble rise, she'll haste unto his throne. But the night that me and some of my, my boys went out and got into some trouble, one of them had beat another guy almost to death with a bat, broke his arm practically in half. I think the statute of limitations has passed, I'm hoping. <laughs> this is all hypothetical, <laughs> just in case the statute of limitations haven't passed. <laughs> Allegedly, possibly, in the multiverse, this is what happened. I called my mom and I said, Mom, I want you to know I'm, I might have to leave tonight. Oh, baby, where you going? You going back to school? No. Mm -mm. I think I might have to get out of town. I, I think they recognize me. Baby, what did you do? Mama, I, it's better you not know, but I'm in some trouble, and I think we're going to have to escape. My mama said, I'm going to help you escape. She went down the street to one of the other church members and picked them up. And you know what she came to escape me in? The church van. With New Jerusalem on the side and Alonzo Adams' name right on it. You gonna help me get out of town in the escape vehicle incognito with my name already on it. I just wanted to tell a story. I, I, I found a way to s slip that into the message. I don't even know where I was going with that. Let's see. <laughs> oh, yeah, we were talking about in-laws. <laughs> there are things that we'll do for our own kids. When your child shoots somebody and they go to the court and you ask God, Lord, have mercy. But when it's your child who got shot, you go to the court and you ask the judge for justice. To the full extent of the law, right? We, we, we need to make sure. Naomi had two daughter-in-laws and both of them, the husbands passed away. Naomi's two sons died and Naomi loved her, her daughter so much, and she said, you all going back to your homeland because I don't have no more kids to give you. And one of them cried, and, and, and they all hugged together, and she left. She's not the bad one. She didn't do anything wrong. She did what was asked of her and, and what was the custom. She went back to her family. But there was one who stayed. Ruth told her, here was a mother-in-law speaking, or her, the daughter-in-law is speaking to the mother, and she said these words, entreat me not to leave you. Anybody ever heard those words before? Those are the words that we use for vows. Entreat me not to leave you. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Where you go, I will go. Your God shall be my God, and your family shall be my family. That actually came from a daughter-in-law to her mother, and we use those words right now to marry people. That's true love. That's a love that's willing to share. Let's, let's. Uh, the last one, I, I want to talk to you, well, Everybody know Mary. We, we, and, and no disrespect, God, if you were Catholic, I'm, I'm not disgracing Mary. In, the, in, in Catholicism, 
Mary is actually, I think, sometimes revered more than Christ himself. Uh, but Mary was a woman who was blessed among women, and, and, and God entrusted her. You know, you, you got to be fine for God to say, you're going to be my woman. Some of y'all only looking at, at, you know, skin deep. They say beauty is skin deep, but ugly is to the bone. There, never mind. Let's. I want to talk to you about Hannah. Any of you all may not remember Hannah, but Hannah had a son, eventually, by the name of Samuel. Hannah, Hannah was barren. The majority of these women that, that, that we bring up were barren women. They didn't, they didn't have no kids and they prayed. Hannah had a husband and her husband had multiple wives. And brothers and sisters, I had somebody to call me last week and they say, Pastor, I, I wanna know, is, uh, uh, tell me about these, these multiple wives. Uh, when did God stop allowing that? I said, God never allowed that. That was man's doing. God said from the beginning, he, he, he took one rib out of Adam, one. If he had taken a whole lot of ribs, he would have been slumped over. One rib, one woman. Man decided I wanted to have multiple women. Women decided they wanted to have multiple men. And I understand that there is a difference when a man do it and a woman do it. When a man do it, he, he's just being a man. He's showing his oats. When a woman do it, she's a slut. We, we, we need to, to stop making different rules for different people. But Hannah decided, Lord, I, I want to give my husband a child. And her husband said, honey, don't you know I love you even, even though you can't give me a kid? I love you anyway. I love you more than all of these. But she said, that's what I want. That's, that's, that's what makes me feel complete. If I had time to talk to you about women, a, a, a child don't make you complete. A man don't make you complete. I know the Bible says it, it's... it's it's not good that man should be alone, but Paul says, if it was possible for you not to marry, I would prefer that you stay single because you can do the work of the Lord and you don't have to answer to nobody. See, it's, it's, it's hard for me sometimes to go to work when I got family days planned because I have to remember that my first ministry, I love you all, but the first ministry that God gave me was to my house to my wife first, then my children. Brothers and sisters, I, I hope you all understand according to the word of God that your husband or your wife takes priority over your children. See, we, we do it backwards, and, and I know that don't sound right. I, I know that, you know, my kids, because my kids can't divorce me, well, ask uh, Macaulay Calkin. Uh, but um, yeah, your kids can. But I understand what you're saying, and, and if you have a good husband and you have a good wife, uh, they will always tell you, if anything happens, take care of the babies. Be, but according to God's law, he says, forsaken all of us. All means all. Oh, uh, a man is not going to complete you, ladies. Brothers, a woman is not going to complete you. If, if, if she's your better half or he's your better half, uh, if you bring two halves together, it don't always make a whole unless it's half of the same person. If you bring your other half and you become whole, when you get two people at 50%, you get two failures. Fifth. Anybody ever went to school know that 50% is an F unless you go to college and they start grading on the scale and you, you learn to appreciate that. I appreciated that a lot. I was in a class full of dummies and I hated the one real smart dude who messed up the curve for everybody. But 
if I bring my F and you bring your F to the relationship, what, what, what y'all gonna get? A bigger F? And that's the problem. Some of you all who, who've been hurt and broken in your life, is y'all mixing with other people just like you and you wonder why y'all broken. And you wonder why you bringing in broken kids. We need this family. And I'm not saying that y'all need us because we have all the answers. My wife will tell you, my daughters and my son will tell you, yeah, we all messed up. We, all, we got problems. But at least we, we found the antidote. We found, and it, it, it took a while. You all, I was preaching when I was praying to God to kill her. I, I ain't joking. That wasn't no joke. That was serious. I'm thinking, okay, well, Lord, I said till death do us part. I'm not going through no more divorces or splits, separation. I'm right. She wrong. So the, the logical thing to do is take her. I'm the breadwinner. I'll make sure the kids get fed and I'll find them another mother. And I called an evangelist and I said, I need you to touch and agree with me. He said, amen, brother. What are we touching and agreeing on? I said, God, to kill the wife. He said, whoa. What? And she in the background, do you hear that idiot? I said, see, that's why she need to die. <laughs> I'm not telling you all that we got it all, but I learned. I learned. It took time. But, but God brought us through it. God brought us through it. Now we're trying to help other folks. There are people, remember I said I was preaching, there are people who are just in church who think that they got it together and it's all wrong. But at least you're in the right place to learn it. So that's why God said, just like son, you learned it, I want you to teach somebody else because there's somebody who don't know. So we're going to try our best to help somebody else get it right, not to tell them that we know it all, but we're going to learn it together. That's what I want to help you all do. Hannah made a promise to God, Lord, if you give me a child, I'll give it back to him. I'll give him back to you. How many of us are making promises that we haven't kept? How many of us have promised our children things that we haven't kept? How many of us promised God, Lord, if you'll get me out of this situation, if you'll get him out of this situation, I'll bring him to you. I'll take him or I'll take her to church. And God says, you done lied to me multiple times. I just wanted to give you all some examples of some of the women in the Bible that, that we could learn from. And there are many, many more. As a matter of fact, everybody in the Bible we can learn something from. We could either learn what to do or we can, might learn what not to do. You all understand what I'm saying? There are people in your life, God had brought them into your life for a reason. Some people, he wants you to learn uh, how to act like them. There are other people, he wants you to, to see what not to do. But God, but God, you are who you are, you are where you are. If you have a mom or, 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 or someone that you know, a mother, an auntie, a godmother, uh, a grandmother, because Grandmas are, are doing a lot nowadays. There are almost as many grandmothers raising their grandchildren as there are mothers raising their children. So I'm, I'm so grateful. But it's, the statistics shouldn't be the same in the church as it is in the world. But you all, we, we got it just as bad. We have just as many divorces in the church we have just as many single parents in the church. We have just as many, you name it, in the church. That should not be. But we got a whole lot of people in the church, preachers, pastors, evangelists, five-fold ministry folks who lying to the folks because they don't know no better. We got a lot of ignorant preachers who are preaching things the wife and I was listening to, to a guy who's on TV and all over the internet and he's saying stuff and all you can do is shake your head and say, Lord, I, I hope the people will study for themselves. I want to, right now, 
make a plea. I would prefer that you all come to Bible study on Tuesday night than come to church on Sunday morning. If you have to choose between a service, I'm asking you as your pastor to come on Tuesday night instead of Sunday morning. Pastor, that don't make no sense. I don't understand. Sunday, you know, Sunday is everybody go meeting day. Yes, that's the way it has traditionally been. But the Bible says my people are destroyed because of a lack of knowledge, not a lack of worship. Bible study is when you learn why you come on Sunday. If I can get you on Bible study, then I can get you right on Sunday. The, the problem is we are ignorant Christians. When you, when you go to the King's Highway and Natural Bridge and they, they, they want to give you a bean pie and, and, and they want to give you what uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan is saying, they know your word. They telling you about your Bible. When they come and knock on your door and say, hi, I'm, I'm from Jesus Christ and the, the Latter-day Saints, they know your word. When they come to you with the watchtower and they want to talk to you about God our Father Jehovah and they want to tell you how we serve the same God and we love Jesus Christ and all of that, they know your word, which is why they're able to bamboozle you because you don't know your word. They got two or three books they read out of. They, you only got one. And you won't even read that one. I ain't trying to beat up on nobody. I'm, I'm, again, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When God come, he ain't going to ask me how come I didn't tell him. I'm, I told all y'all, they, they on their own. I'm not just trying to, to, to fill the building up. I ain't trying to just make you jump and shout. There's a whole lot of people who can jump and shout. There's a whole lot of folks, man, I can, I can, I can give you a church that'll make you feel good. I've been raised in church, and I done been to uh, Baptist, Pentecostal, Apostolic, Church of God in Christ. Y'all, I can mix all of them up and fill this building up. I could get enough money to get some musicians to rock it and do all of that, and everybody up here be, hey, ho, oh, and, 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 and then you go from that to, to shouting, and then you go from that to backing it up, and then everybody be happy. We, yeah, backing it up, twerking it, pole, dancing, all of it. There are people in the churches who are doing all of this stuff, all of this. And the churches are packed. This little corner wouldn't be able to hold us. But there's a lot of people in them churches that's going to die and go to hell. And that pastor, <laughs> God forbid, I ain't going to hell for none of y'all. I just told y'all I got enough stuff on my own record that I'm going to have to give an account for. I'm hoping and praying that something have been said to you today. The doors of the church is open. Something have been said to you today that will help you to, to understand and know the truth. Oh my God, is that really? Ah, man, I did it again. All right. I took a long time. Don't y'all take a long time. Anybody want to join? Anybody want to be saved? Is there anyone that don't have a church home that's looking for a church home? If you, ha if you don't have a church home and you, you need a church home, come now. Uh, if, if you want to be saved, and, and I don't want to, to rush when it comes to salvation. When it comes to joining the church, you already know where you want to be and what you want to do. But I want to ask you if there's anyone that, is everybody in here saved? If, if you have accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, raise your hand. Okay, if you haven't and, and, and you want to be saved, this is your opportunity. Or at the very least, I hope that I have given you enough to understand who God is, who Jesus is. Jesus Christ came for you. He left everything that he had in heaven and came to this place and lived here for 33 years and church people killed him. 
It was the church folks who killed him. It wasn't the world who killed him. But he did that. He became sin for all of us so that we would, who are living in sin wouldn't get the punishment of sin, which is not only death, but hell. So because of God, God have done some great things. He've done nothing but great things, and he gave us the ability to accept his son so that we could get to heaven. That is the gospel message. So we see that there is none, but yet there is room. Uh, thank you so, so much, brothers. You, you all can put the chairs away. Uh, we're going to get ready for baptism. Uh, if you will, just go and let Sister Kim know that we're getting ready to do the baptism. If those children would like to come and, and sing or, or, or present to us, they can do so after the baptism. But we, we have roughly uh, five to six minutes, ten minutes, and, and we'll be ready for them. Brothers and sisters, for those who would like to be a part and would like to see uh, the baptism, you all are more than welcome to come up. I do understand that, that time is well spent, but uh, if, if you all, I'm, I'm not holding nobody hostage, that's against the law. So if, if you all need to go or, or have reservations or, or, or whatever, you are more than welcome. I do not want to hold you, but this is a very important part. As a matter of fact, as far as I'm concerned today, this is the most important part of today's service. So uh, for those, we want to bring you all on up. Uh, thank you, sweetheart. Yeah, just, just pull that up for me. And that's my baby. I'm probably going to get this all wet anyway, ain't I? Yeah. I just hope I don't get electrocuted. Where, where's Lady Adams at? Woo! Y'all, come on up. Come on up. Listen, I, I know that uh, I don't... <laughs> she gonna be a spectator. She ain't, she ain't getting it. <laughs> Trust me, dear. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this, yeah. This, this water is not cold at all. It's, it's actually extremely warm. Uh, Baptism is in a very important part of our Christian walk. It is the very beginning of our Christian walk. Baptism is the symbolism of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. The reason why we get baptized, he says, if you are afraid or ashamed to own me before your fellow man, I will be ashamed to own you before my father. So baptism is our way of going through uh, the death, burial, and the resurrection of God. So, sister, you said just a few days ago that you wanted to accept Christ as your Savior. It, it was not because of what mama did or, or what sisters or cousins or friends or, or, or daddy or, or whoever. This is your own confession. So I want all of you all to understand that what you are doing, you are doing because God touched your heart. And because when I got saved, I didn't really get saved because I, I wanted to go to hell. I got saved because I was afraid to go to hell. I knew hell was real, and I didn't want no parts of it. So I want you to know that according to God, you gave your life, you gave your heart, you spoke it. Because the Bible says, if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. Do you still believe that? Do you still accept that? Put your hands across you. Obedience to the great head of the church, my sister. I baptize you right now in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit.
Amen. that you took the time you moved on your own I'm grateful and I'm grateful for the upbringing of that and sin but you, you've been not only a part of the ministry you've been a helper you've been in with them children and you've been taking the time to love on them and to grow and I've seen such growth in you oh my God for years to see where you are right now but I know now, I believe now that the reason why you have come is because you understand why you are here. You understand what it means to have accepted Christ as your Savior. Do you still accept that confession of faith? Then in obedience to the great head of the church, my sister, I baptize you right now in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. different than that's how it was that morning and I added cold water to it says that the angels in heaven, you believe in angels? The angels in heaven rejoice when one comes and you are so special to God. And you said last week, I missed it, I wasn't here, but I was watching. But you said that you would accept Jesus Christ to be your savior. You, you're going to let him try to lead you and help you as you go through life. Do you still accept that? Well, I'm, I'm so grateful to have you and to have your family here to witness this with you. So in obedience to the great head of the church, which is our Father, God, I baptize you right now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To God be all the glory. I believe we still have maybe two or three more that are waiting for the baptism. Um, I know our sister over here, she, she's kind of hurting because of that accident. But I'm grateful. Listen to this. If God had chosen to allow her to go home to glory, I'm grateful that she accepted Christ a few weeks ago. And if we had to have, if we had to have a funeral, brothers and sisters at my funeral, I, I, I want folks not to be happy. You know, I want you to be joyful. But I want you to, to know that pastor, God daddy, 
daddy, husband, he's going on to be with the Lord. He's rejoicing. I don't care which way, how I have to leave, uh, if it's in a violent manner or, or if it's illness, if, if that's what God allows, I'm free. I'm grateful that that young lady accepted Christ. And Satan is mad that she has. And, and, and the same thing happened to her brother. There is a special calling on both of you all's life. That it's not a coincidence. Don't, don't think that it's a coincidence. Satan is, if I use the, he is ticked off that, that you all not only have accepted Christ, but you are here and, and you are learning. God is feeding you and, and, and Satan don't like it. He's, he's, he's hella mad. And I, I mean that exactly how it sounds. So, uh, once we can get you to where you're feeling better and you're healed up and all of that, we're going to have you ready for, for the water. And, and there are a couple of other young folks who said, Pastor, I'll be ready. I thank God that should he return, whether or not you have been baptized or not won't keep you out of heaven. So to God be all the glory. Uh, what do we have here? Okay, the, uh, Lord Jesus, honey, would you, can, uh, okay. This one goes to this one. Lord, this is, a, this is a good problem to have. This is a very good problem to have. Did it, uh, the other, the other folks who, who, who were baptized a couple of weeks ago, did we give all of them their, uh, mother, did you all, did you get your certificates and all of that? Did, okay, we, we need to make sure, uh, huh? She wanted to join? Well, let's, 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 let's give her a chair. Deacon, don't worry about it. Don't, 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 don't worry. God bless you. Thank you all. I, I love my deacon. Um, First Lady, isn't it in October we're doing the, uh, I know this is, this is far away. This is far away, but we're, we're going to be doing uh, a, a, a dual appreciation and ordination services for Deacon Johnson. Deacon Johnson has been working as a deacon uh, ever since I took office, and he has been doing a great work. And, and I want him to be, uh, I, I want him to be acknowledged for his work. Yes, dear. I thought she didn't, you hadn't joined yet? You have, do, well, well, come on, honey, if you, I don't, I don't want nobody to force you, but if that's, amen. 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 Yeah, well, God is doing something right. I, I, I'm, I'm grateful that we are being faithful. Uh, uh, Yes, ma'am. Go ahead and and just write on the back for right now, and and we will we will add it. We will take the time, and we will do our due diligence. Uh, you all, we've been talking about doing a children's church for years. And I can see now why Satan didn't want it to happen. Jerusalem has doubled in size in the last four months. And it is due to the children's church. Some of these children have been here uh, 
with us for years, but they are being trained, they are being included, they, they feel that uh, they have a part of this ministry. You all, uh, if you all will, once again, help me give a hand clap of praise to our own Sister Kim, who, who has been instrumental in doing the work I tell you what, let's, uh, if you will, just, just get me names and uh, how they are coming. If they're coming for uh, candidate for baptism or if they're coming for, yep, so I, I need names, uh, how they are coming, and uh, yeah, if they're candidate for baptism, Christian experience, or if we want to bring them in under watch care. If, if they're not ready for baptism yet because of their understanding, we'll bring them in under watch care so that we can train them and, and get them to understand that. Brothers and sisters, I'm, I'm, as I don't want to not follow the spirit, I know that our normal time for getting out of here is usually 11 o'clock, you know, very, and, and some folks may have made reservations uh, based on the time that we normally get out. And I don't want you to miss that, but I, I can't miss this. Amen? So uh, uh, I appreciate your patience and we're, we're going to move very quickly. Yes, ma'am. God is good. So grateful. This is why, uh, this is why we have to get this this choir put together, because these these kids are singing and they're enjoying singing, and I want them to be able to express their ministry. You all understand? So, parents, I'm going to need you all to help me, uh, because they have to be consistent. And and. If they come to rehearsal and you don't bring them on Sunday, they're going to feel some kind of way. And on the other end, if you don't bring them to rehearsal, but they come on Sunday and they see everybody else singing, but they can't sing because they couldn't rehearse. I'm not just going to let anybody come up and, and just stand there. It's not fair to them. It's not fair to the folks who, who made their way. So I need you all to bring them to rehearsal and continue to bring them to service. Are we ready, Mother? Yes, sir. Pastor, we have uh, Journey Morrow coming for candidate of baptism. We have Sister Stenna, baby Sister. We have Chad Douglas, is it right? Coming for candidate of baptism. You may stand. And we have Brother Ortiz Bradley coming for candidate of baptism. Amen. We have three more for the water. Journey. Ch Chaz. Chance. Chaz. Daughter. Artez. Chaz and Artez. Are y'all related? All right, listen. Salvation is not hard. Living sometimes, living a saved life can be hard. But the process of becoming saved is simple. God is a spirit. God is in heaven. You all believe in God? Can you believe in God? God has a son by the name of Jesus Christ who was in heaven and he left heaven and came to earth and he lived on earth for 33 years and he came and he showed everybody who he was so that we would believe in him and have faith in him he died he died a very horrible death but he did it so that we would not have to live and 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 have horrible lives but we would have faith and then he after three days of being dead he rose again. God rose him from the dead and he went back to heaven and he's waiting to come back for us. 
The Bible says, if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you can be saved. Can you believe that God raised Jesus from the dead? Can you believe that God raised Jesus from the dead? Can you believe that God raised Jesus from the dead? By your confession, as of today, you are saved. God has just saved your life. Now, it's going to take time. It doesn't have to, but it's going to take time to get a true understanding of everything that you've done. But if you all have an understanding, then what we would like to do, if the Lord will allow us, is maybe next week, if uh, either next week or the 28th, if, if you all are ready, we could get you all baptized. We could do what we just did for those other young people and get you all ready, and we'll make sure that you get all the information. Are you all okay with that? I, I, I know you are, and I know Dad and Mom is, 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 is here to make sure. Your parents or your guardians, are they here to, to make sure that that's okay? Yes? Okay, good. Well, then this time... Uh, next week, if the Lord will allow, you all will be baptized. I'm so grateful for it. Can I get a group hug so we can do this all at once? Everybody all at once? All right. Uh, now, so what we're going to do, uh, that, that was, you know, uh, we don't have to make a motion in second. What I'm saying to you is, as pastor, once you are baptized, you will have the right hand of fellowship and you will have all of the rights. I don't care if you will have just as much right to this church and, and what we do because you are part of the body of Christ. We're going to train you about church and all of that other kind of stuff. But I want you all to know that you all are just as much of a part of this body of Christ and this family as anybody else. I love you. I'm proud of you, little man. I'm you all can be seated and, and, and next week we'll have you baptized if, it's, uh, if it be the Lord's will huh all right all right uh, are we good oh, is, am I missing anything oh Are, are, are we getting certificates and all of that? Everybody, you all, uh, I'm, I'm trying to, to move expeditiously. All right. Uh, Samaya, come here, baby. I want to present, this says, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God. This certifies that Samaya McIntyre was baptized, did I say that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Was baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit on the 14th of May, uh, 2023 at New Jerusalem Missionary, or no, excuse me, Lord, I forgot our name changed, at uh, New Jerusalem Church, number one North Dade, Ferguson, Missouri, by Alonzo Adams, Jr. Here you go, sweetheart. This is a Bible that is for you, and, and this is a shirt that was created for you. It says, I left, I left it in the water, proud to be baptized. And, and you, the church is in for You sure can. Let me, oh, Lord Jesus. All right. You're welcome. All right. Uh, so, Jemiah. That she is. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God. This certifies that Jemiah was baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit on the 14th day of May, 2023 at New Jerusalem Church by Alonzo Adams, Jr. There is your certificate, honey. Here is the Bible for you. I, uh, I know y'all getting books and y'all like, what are we supposed to do with books? Uh, it's, it's, it's just like the electronic version, but just in case you ever, if you ever forget where your, 
where your, your electronic version came from, you got one that you can read and print. And here is your T-shirt that says the same. I'm very proud of you. Micaiah. Did I pronounce it right? Did I say it right? All right. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God. This certifies that Micaiah Little was baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit on the 14th day of May in the year of our Lord, 2023, at New Jerusalem Church by Alonzo Adams, Jr. Here you go, sweetheart. God bless you. I'm so proud of you. Is that daddy right there? Daddy, come and give your baby a hug. Train her, train her up in the way that she should go. Uh, we got a group of men here that I would love for you to be a part of. Here is your Bible, sweetheart, and here is your shirt. Wear it proud. Amen. Uh, hey, do me a favor because every, everybody got certificates, but everybody, I, I didn't get a chance to present it to everyone. Can, can all of our, uh, our recent bat, baptismes, all of the folks who just recently got baptized, you all come on up. Come on up. Amen. Families. Families. This is, this is so important. Y'all, come on. Did you get baptized? Huh? But you say you want to be, huh? Amen. All of these young people. Look what God. Hey, I need some young men because uh, we don't we don't want to be outnumbered. Amen. This is a beautiful thing, though. To God be all the glory. God bless you all. Uh, we we. Uh, Yep. Do we uh, shirts? Everybody get a get a shirt. All right. So everybody got their their certificates. Did everybody everybody got a shirt, right? Yeah. All right. I'm. Uh, thank God, y'all. We 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 doing stuff right. We. Professional. Amen. All right. Amen. To God be all the glory. Yeah. All right. Keep. Hey, praise God. To God be all the glory. All right. God bless you all. You can be seated. Let us stand as we prepare for dismissal. I hope you all know what days y'all want to rehearse because uh, right, after, right after service, right after service, I, I need you all up here for, for two minutes because uh, uh, we, we have a lot of things yet still uh, that we have to do afterwards. Yes, yes ma'am. Huh? All right, y'all, y'all, y'all. Come on, come on up, uh, all the babies, uh, all the kids who want to sing. Yep. Sunday school kids.
Amen. All right. While, while we are yet standing, let us pray. Father God, we thank you right now. Lord, we thank you for these children. Uh, God, we even thank you for the warfare. As we are talking about and dealing with the spiritual warfare, God, we thank you that above all, we are carrying the shield of faith. Lord, help us to, to not only sing about it, but be about it. God, I thank you for this sister who have come and have given her time and her talents and her resources to these children. And, and, and because of the vision, God, that you have given, you are adding to the church as should be added. God, we thank you so much. We ask now that you would bless them, go with them. Bless these mothers, Lord. Help them because they're trying. They want to do the right thing. They are here because they want to do right. They want to try to do something different to, to make a better life for them and for their families. Help us to help them the way that you have saw fit. Thank you for all of those who are bringing these people. Lord, for Sister Betty and, and Earlene and their families that are coming and, and, and all of the work that you are doing with them and in them, Lord, we, there's nothing more we can say but thank you. We ask now that you would go with the walkers, go with the riders, uh, and just be with us in Jesus' name. Let every heart say amen. amen. All right. Yeah. If, hey, my, my, if, if you all want to join the choir.